All right, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesday. It really is great to be with everyone here today. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I am Jason there on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by David Rockland, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories. David, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Of course, happy to be back and looking forward to getting into this presentation, and thanks to the new faces who are joining us today. Yeah, you know, I always like to recommend joining our Facebook group. It's a great way to keep the conversations going in between Webinar Wednesdays. I've actually seen an influx of new members joining the group the past couple weeks. Uh, so it's really great to see the participation and the questions and discussions that are being asked in there. Uh, so if you're not a member of the Facebook group, we do invite you to join. You can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and just click on that blue join button in there. All right, and also for those of you joining for the first time, again, welcome. Uh, you know, Webinar Wednesday uh, is really a great venue to explore some of the new features that are added to Brilliant Directories and talk about how they could help you actually grow and cultivate your community. We also like to talk about marketing strategies such as increasing traffic, um, identifying revenue opportunities. One of my favorites and I think is the most important is improving your website's navigation. Those are your main menu links. Um, in a nutshell, I think the simpler the better. But if you have any questions on these topics or related topics, please save them. We'll try to get to as many as possible in this webinar. All right. And, you know, month after month now, ever since I'd say July of last year, the, the Brilliant Directories dev team has been pushing updates faster than I've ever seen in the decade we've been running Brilliant Directories. Um, so I have a few updates that I'd like to share with you guys today. I'll try not to drag it out too long, uh, but I think these are some noteworthy things that can help both you and your members while you're running your websites. One thing that I think is really important is, you know, your members receive leads uh, from your website and these leads can come from their profile pages, people sending inquiries from their profile pages, but they can also come from um, the event posts that your members might create or job listings or classified posts that your members might make. Um, and until this update, they really didn't know the origin or the page where that lead was submitted from. So it really didn't provide too much context based on the message that was sent to them. So now the origin page is a part of the get matched form. And let me kind of show you where this is going to be. So um, if you have the get matched form, I'm going to show you actually how to add this to your get matched form, because if you've customized your get matched form, which is perfectly fine, you just want to add an extra field there. And I'll show you exactly how you can do that. So um, what it's going to show is they're going to get their regular lead information. And the last item here is going to be the origin page. And if you click on it, it just lets them know where that lead originated from. So it provides a little bit better context as to where that lead was submitted from and what the person is actually inquiring about. Uh, so let me actually show you, if you have customized your get matched form, again, it's not a problem, but you're not gonna have this right away. Uh, let me show you exactly what you need to do. You're gonna wanna go to your form manager and you're gonna wanna look for your, okay. So if you head on over to your form manager, um, look for the website lead get matched form, or you might have it by the system name, which is the bootstrap get matched form. And in this case, I'm just going to customize the form. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down. So these are all the default form fields that um, are provided with the get matched form. I'm gonna make this real easy for you though. What you're gonna wanna do is, this is only if you have the get matched form customized. Um, create a new form field for your form at the top there. You just click the blue button that says new field and make sure it's a custom HTML field. And then you're going to want to paste this widget shortcode into the label name. And then lastly, there's just one other thing you want to do. Make this a bit smaller. You can open up your field settings and set all of these display options to yes, except the table view. So just set that one to know that by default, when you create a new field, everything is set to yes, so just do table view no. So three steps, new form field, custom HTML field type, and paste the label name, and then lastly, just set the table view to no, and go ahead and save your changes. You can choose where you want this to display. Um, it will display based on where you put it on your form, uh, the, the get matched form. Personally, I'm actually thinking that a better placement for this would be right above the first name. Uh, let me scroll up right here, right above the name label field. 
um, because then it would show kind of at the top of this page right underneath the price. But the preference is yours. Um, you can use the default view or if you have it customized, you can toggle it higher or lower wherever you want. All right, this one is a, like a quality of life, uh, both for your, your members and your website visitors. We've now added two filters for categories on your website for quick searches. Um, not everyone might be using this, but let me show you a, a good example of how this comes into use. Um, so most BD sites, if you go to the footer, uh, there is a link to view all the member categories on your site. Now, if you don't have too many categories, um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but this is still pretty convenient. If you have a lot of categories, like I think this site is a perfect example, it's really hard for someone to come here and search for uh, a category that they're looking for. So what you can do is start typing here, and I'll type like, for example, accountants, and I can see that everything is getting a quick filter. So this is available. It's connected to the widget on this page that displays uh, your member categories. And uh, yeah, if you're using this page, um, this can come in handy and just provide a better search experience for your visitors. And on the flip side, when your members are selecting their categories, if you're a site as extensive as this that has many, many categories, um, we need to make it easy for the members to search for those categories when they're creating their profile and their listing. So if we toggle over to the listing details tab now, and this should be for available for everyone as, uh, as long as you haven't customized this widget in the past. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, all those categories, there's a lot of categories listed here based on this member's top level category. Uh, so as we start typing, for example, we'll do advertising. We can quickly see that the options have been uh, uh, minimized and I can quickly see the categories that are related to me if I'm trying to find uh, categories for uh, myself. So uh, those two are available for your members and for your visitors. All right, now we've added two more bulk action areas uh, in your admin. We're, we're adding more and more bulk actions, especially to the members search area in the admin, but I'll just quickly cover this one. Um, now in your admin area under forms and widgets, we have bulk actions here uh, for your customized forms. So you can uh, do things such as uh, disable them if you're trying to troubleshoot something, maybe something's not working, you don't know if it's because of your custom form, you can quickly disable uh, a bunch of forms and then re-enable them if you need to. It's a great way to troubleshoot, as well as delete erroneous forms that you don't need on your site. Um, and the same for widgets. If you have customized widgets, um, you can delete the selected, enable, uh, or disable uh, selected widgets. So this is a good way to do some bulk actions for your forms and your widgets. All right, this next one here, let's, let's do a quick vote here. If you want to do a show of hands, who uses the member, let me lower everyone's hands, who uses the member review functionality uh, where you allow visitors to leave reviews for your members on your site? Uh, let's see who's got their hand up. VJ's got his hand up. Okay, a lot of hands just went up here. Clayton, Colette, Franco, Jeff. Okay, I'd say about 25% of the people here are using um, the reviews. Now I'm going to put everyone's hands down again. Who moderates the reviews and who who actually manually reviews them or reviews them before they're approved right now? Okay, less hands going up, yeah. Uh, Dennis and Jeff and Franco and Lindsay. Yeah, so just depending on you know the volume of reviews you're getting on your site or, or the overall quality of reviews, sometimes it's a good idea to choose to manually approve reviews um, rather than giving it to the power to your members or just automatically having them set to accepted status. Uh, so what's really nice now is there are email options when you manually approve reviews in the admin area, and I'll show you what that looks like. So actually this review is accepted, but let's change the status. Let's say it's waiting for the admin. So visitor came to the site, they submitted a review, and um, you know you come here and you see that there's a review here, everything looks good, and you want to set this to accepted. So we change the status to accepted, and now what you have are email notification uh, options. So uh, you can choose to email the member about this update, that, they, they have a new accepted review. You can email the reviewer saying their review has been accepted. 
or you can email both the member and the reviewer and let them know about this update. I forget the off the top of my head what the email templates are for these, but you can do a quick test uh, for yourself, see what email you receive. That's always good practice if you're wondering what automated emails are going out. And then head on over to the email template section and find the email that has a similar subject line if you want to edit these further. So now um, when you're manually approving reviews, you can choose to have emails go out both to the member and the reviewer. So it's a good way to continue engagement uh, with your members as well as your visitors. And if you do customize those uh, email templates, don't just thank them, give them a next step, give them something else to do to engage further with your site. Draw them in more, thank them, and then ask them for a second action. Um, also check out these articles on our site or also do something else on our site or join us on Facebook and things like that. So always use an engagement or touch opportunity to ask for or direct them somewhere else uh, on your site or to get them more involved in your community. All right, and this is something that's actually been lacking um, in the BD admin dashboard. I have to say it's been a pretty poor mobile view. Um, the front end of the software developed a lot faster than the back end admin area. Uh, but what we've done is we've put um, some quick patches to provide a better mobile experience of the admin dashboard. So let me show you how that looks. We can actually use this as an example. Let me just toggle a mobile view here. And the goal here is, is to make it actually usable. So what you can do is you'll get this message here, just so you know, that on mobile, you can actually swipe left and right, and you can have full usage of the admin area on tablets and smart devices. Um, and really, you'll get the same experience that you're getting on desktop. You just swipe left and right on your mobile device. Prior to this, we were trying to stack these tables on top of each other and just turned into a real cluttered mess. But um, this is a first step to improving things in the admin uh, for you guys. And I have to say about 90% of the features in the admin are, are very usable like this. I've tested it on my iPhone myself, and I'm really happy with what the team did with this. So uh, if you need to do some basic things in the admin on the go, now it should be a lot easier and a lot better to do so for you. All right, and uh, some things, some of these I mentioned in the previous webinar, but they're just on the cusp of being released. Um, you'll soon be able to add tables and rows into the text editor. So if you're trying to make a web page, for example, and you want four images lined up exactly evenly in a row, this is gonna allow you to do that. Even better, putting text and image combinations on the same row. It's gonna allow you to provide, uh, create some better landing pages through the text editor that we have now. Also, this is an extension to the advanced post moderation add-on. So we do have an add-on where you can choose to moderate all your members' posts, like events and coupons that they publish. Right now, it's just on a per post type basis. So just all the coupons will apply to all the membership levels. What's coming down the line is you'll be able to choose which membership levels um, have uh, different post moderation settings. So perhaps your higher tiered members uh, you don't moderate and stop their posts. You'll allow them to self-publish their posts. So that'll be a big perk uh, for your higher tiered members. Another thing that we've been waiting for for quite a while, but we have the logic down, is being able to identify which of your members have submitted or filled out specific forms. So if you want to know which one of your members have completed, for example, their listing details form or who have ever filled out the events form to publish an event uh, or any other form that a member would submit on your site, you'll soon be able to identify who those members are. You could then export those lists and then send email campaigns, perhaps from a third party or uh, through the newsletter functionality and uh, you know, just say, hey, why don't you publish an event? Or it looks like you haven't completed your profile. Um, and things like that. So I'm personally excited about that one. I think it's a big direction for BD uh, towards becoming a better CMS. Two new bulk actions are coming down the line for the search members page. One is the ability to change the post to author. So perhaps you're about to delete a member or uh, bulk delete several members and you don't wanna delete the posts or, that they've created. Uh, you can then choose to assign them to another existing member before you delete those members. Another one bulk action that's coming down the line is changing the parent of a sub account. So for those of you using the sub accounts feature, uh, sometimes you may need to rearrange who the parent or who the master uh, member account is of those sub accounts. Uh, you'll be able to do it with a couple quick clicks with the bulk action. So uh, that should be a good quality of life update for you there.
Another thing, star icons when writing reviews. This is coming down the lines. I expect this to be released next week. Uh, so this will be available to everyone. And basically, um, these stars, what you probably expect, will replace the radio buttons that are there right now. So just a little bit better uh, design here. It looks a little bit more developed. So it should provide a better experience for your members uh, and your visitors as well. And then lastly, you know, when members sign up to your site for the first time, you can choose what their account status is going to be, whether it's inactive and they need to verify their email or they're going to be set on hold or if they are active. We're also extending that same functionality when members upgrade to a specific membership level. Uh, you'll be able to choose what the account status should be when mem members upgrade to a specific membership level. Generally, we're just going to want to set them to active uh, because if they're upgrading, they're paying to be part of a higher tiered plan. Uh, but we've seen and had feedback about instances where when members upgrade, uh, you know, the owners of the website would like the status to be something else besides active. So lots of things down the line. This wasn't even everything. We have dozens of more updates coming and I'll be happy to share them in the Facebook group and in the next webinar as they become available. So that are quite a few lab updates there. If you guys have any questions about these updates or something related to these, I'll be happy to take a couple now before we get into the tip of the week. Yeah, I'm blown away too. Not too many hands going up. That's perfectly fine. All right, let's head on over to the tip of the week. I think this week's tip of the week is a great refresher for all of us, especially if we've been working on our site for a while. Um, David put together these slides and I think, you know, the membership plan settings that BD offers, there's dozens of them there, but we just wanted to pick out uh, some of our favorites that can really add value uh, to your members and to the membership level plans that you're creating for them. So uh, Dave, tell us a little bit about this and we can dive right into it. Yeah, I think you pretty much explained it perfectly. There's so many options throughout the admin as a whole, but this week we figured we'd focus specifically on membership plans and because there's so many settings within the membership plan options as well, we figured that it would be best to kind of pinpoint and highlight a few select settings that can really add some pretty good and unique value to your various membership plans and hopefully entice either just website visitors to purchase a membership on your site or to uh, better fit membership plans and profile pages to what your website focuses on as a whole. So as we go through these, we've got some five main ones that we're going to focus on as well as a few bonus ones after that. But for the most part, these are really going to be focusing on improving member retention, encouraging member interaction on your website. So not necessarily with other members, but encouraging them to take specific action on your website to keep them on your site and uh, interacting with it in various ways as well as increasing member upgrades so that you can increase your revenue. And then also hopefully reducing some support inquiries depending on how you utilize some of these settings. So we listed out the top five settings that we'll be going over here, and then we'll go and dive into each one individually. But uh, the first one is adding a unique sidebar on the sign up or the checkout pages on your website. We've got some really good tips for this one. So here on the right hand side, you could see just a sample checkout page. This is actually one from brilliantdirectories.com, but ones on your directory websites are very similar and you can add similar sidebars to those as well. You can set specific sidebars depending on the membership level and in these sidebars, you can add unique widgets, uh, and these can consist of confidence boosters, maybe answering some last minute questions or concerns that you think potential members may have while they're checking out, if you want to address those and try to, uh, to quell their nerves a little bit that way. And then you can also reinforce the major benefits and features that they'll be receiving when they do purchase this membership. Uh, that way, you're, uh, you're really reinforcing all of the good stuff that they'll be getting and minimizing the chances that they'll end up turning away from this checkout page. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of us here on the webinar are actually using confidence boosters in the sidebar. Uh, we did have an article in our support center. So um, those of you who aren't doing this yet, uh, this is kind of a step-by-step -step guide uh, for getting started on how to add a, a similar 
similar confidence boosters to the sidebar. So we do have the first step and we have uh, some code you can put and just replace the text and some examples there. If you're not comfortable with the code and all that stuff, you can go to places like canva.com and just create like banner ads that kind of have the text built into the image and just put the images there in the in the sidebar. That would be the, the easiest thing for anyone to do uh, if you're not comfortable actually like coding with the text and stuff. Just make images that have the text built into uh, the element itself. Yeah, we actually did dedicate an entire tip of the week specifically to confidence boosters. Um, that, of course, is available in our blog section as, um, as a short video snippet, but the support center page that Jason shared is perfect for actually giving you instructions on how to set one of these up yourself and providing you with some sample code as well. So number two, upgrading the page header and description for the upgrade pages when your members are choosing a higher tiered membership plan to upgrade to. Um, so as many of you know, there's settings to configure whether or not members have the opportunity to upgrade to a higher tier membership plan, whether that be just strictly a price difference or differences in features. Uh, there's some settings that you can configure to add additional details to this upgrade page within their account so that you can reinforce the extra benefits that they'll be getting with those higher tiered plans should they choose to upgrade. And uh, ag again, this acts very similarly to the sidebar on the checkout pages. You can really utilize this space very well to better entice users to upgrade, explain why it's worth upgrading, uh, maybe offer some promotions or coupon codes within this area to really get them to uh, commit to that upgrade. There's various ways you can utilize it, but it's, uh, it's an incredibly useful setting and you can really utilize this space very well. And actually, let me show everyone where this one is, because uh, again, not everyone might be too familiar with this. Um, if you go to the Finance tab to your member plans here, and let's just click on one to edit, this bronze plan. So under the Pricing tab, if you scroll down, uh, there are these two input boxes here for upgrade page header. So this is where you would you know, put the, like the, hey, you should upgrade your plan and, you know, leave this membership level and go to our other membership levels, you're missing out. And then this one is under the different plans that would be listed. Let's say there's three plans. You can list the benefits of this specific plan uh, that you're editing. We're actually going to turn these two input boxes into the text editor. So it'll be a little easier to use uh, to style um, these sections a bit. But we do have a quick workaround, which I'll explain in another slide. But basically, uh, until we turn these into the text editor boxes, um, you could you could actually go to like edit web pages and just create a new page, style up you know whatever you want to say here and um, get it the way looking the way you want it to look, and then just click on over to the code view and then copy and paste the code view and paste it into uh, here. So a little complicated if you're not familiar with that, but basically using the text editor from the edit web pages and pasting the code here in the meantime while we get these uh, the text editors working in here. Yeah, and here on the screenshot, you can see the two different sections. So where that red arrow is pointing, that's that text area on the right in the settings uh, where you can add details specifically for this membership plan, why why members should upgrade to that specific plan. The text right above it is uh, that header content section. So number three, profile page overview items order. So on member profile pages, there's the overview tab. By default, this is the very first tab that's displayed on profile pages, and it's where the contact information, uh, additional details, a location map, as well as their quote and any other kind of general information that you have on the member is displayed. So what you can do is you can actually rearrange the sections within this overview tab so that it better reflects the information that your website or your directory as a whole is providing to the end user. So for example, if um, your directory really isn't too focused on specific locations, uh, like, for example, if maybe you have just a very small niche local directory where providing a map really isn't all that important, then you can choose to remove it or move it farther down on the overview tab and prioritize maybe the business's contact details at the top of the tab. 
And what's really good is also, again, considering your lower tiered and higher tiered membership levels, you can actually turn off some of the information. Let's actually take a look real quick again as what information you can have there in the overview tab. Uh, so the settings for that, um, again, go to membership plans, edit one of your levels, and then toggle on over to the profile tab. And if you scroll down, we have the profile page overview tab order. We covered this in a previous webinar. Uh, so by default, there's five things, your Google map, their personal quote, contact details, listing details, and their about me section. So you can certainly arrange the order, but maybe for your lower tiered members, you don't display all the information and it's only for higher tiered members, which uh, for your higher tiered members, it'll display basically a more decorated uh, member profile page. So just some things to consider about the control you have generally for your lower tiered members. Um, you want to give them just enough so they have some value, but you want to suppress or restrict some things perhaps uh, to make your higher tiered plans show a lot more perceived value. And moving on to number four, this is a great one. This is another one that I believe we covered in a previous tip of the week as well, but the dashboard, the member dashboard, header and footer custom HTML. So there's in the member dashboard, typically when a member logs in, this sent straight to the dashboard page and here they have the links to add content uh, to manage their account and uh, basically just general account management kind of links. With this setting, you can choose to add additional custom content to the very top of this dashboard area. As you can see in the screenshot where that red arrow is pointing, that's all custom content that's been added to this member dashboard. If this content wasn't there, then the dashboard would just start at that progress bar. Um, so in this area, you can add for new members, maybe next steps uh, so that you lay out a, a clear plan of actions that your new members can follow in order to get their profile completely set up and start adding content. Uh, you can promote either website news specifically for your website if maybe new features are released or you can promote industry news here if there's you know really something groundbreaking that's happened within your website's target industry you can also provide upgrade promotions uh, if you're running discounts on membership plans or maybe uh, an event is going on and you really want to publicize it to your members when they log in you can put that information right here on this very first page that they view so there's a lot of really useful opportunities that you could uh, take advantage of with this setting and also let me uh, show where this setting is it's also in the member dashboard with this one, actually, you can create a custom HTML widget, and all you need to do on this one is select um, which custom widget you want to display here, uh, because you can have both a header and a footer. Uh, and I've seen people do some really amazing things for their introductory levels. I've seen them create like a little welcome message and actually have a welcome video here explaining how the people can uh, get the most out of the website and things like that. So it's really great real estate uh, right there in the member dashboard for your users. So um, this one is also uh, in the membership plans, of course, because that's what we're talking about. This one would be under the additional settings and under the da member dashboard options. Uh, so what you have here are the two, it's two drop downs because all you need to do is select the, the custom widget you want. Um, so if you have customized widgets on your site, you would just select them here and they would show above or below the dashboard content respectively. Yeah, I think as you mentioned, embedding a YouTube video or a Vimeo video in this section is really a creative use of the space and also one that's uh, really shown to uh, provide lots of use and value to members. Whether it's just a simple welcome video explaining members about their new benefits or uh, welcoming them to the community, again, mentioning next steps for them to take. If you embed a video here, it's a, it's a really creative way and welcoming way to, uh, to invite members in as soon as they log into their accounts. And lastly, this setting isn't actually in the membership plan settings. It's in the post settings for all the different kinds of posts. But you can choose the order that a specific posts tab is displayed on members' profile pages. So again, in the screenshot, that red arrow is pointing to the events tab on this specific member's profile page. So if you go into the events post settings, you can choose what position the events tab is displayed on member profile pages. So in this example, events is all the way last. 
if you have a website focused specifically on events, you might want that tab to either be first before overview, maybe you want it after overview, but you can choose to rearrange that order and move it up to uh, prioritize it and showcase the events that this member uh, has published. And again, this setting is available for all the different kinds of post types, so you can reorder and rearrange and, uh, and optimize these tabs based on your website's goals. Yeah, exactly. Based on the website's goals. And I actually see this a lot for sites that are photo rich. Uh, you know, the members have photo albums and we see a lot of uh, wedding vendor directories on brilliant directories. And the first thing you want to see, obviously, is the eye candy from uh, the beautiful photographs that the vendors are publishing. So perhaps you want to make the first tab, not the overview tab, but one of the photo album tabs. Same thing could be said about a classified ads website. Um, you know, just like you know, if someone has an eBay account or something like that and they're posting lots of content, uh, the first tab would probably be all the classified listings, not necessarily the overview tab, which would be extra information that the user would want to see, not the main information. But let me show everyone where they can edit this as well, um, because these are post settings. They're not necessarily in the membership plan settings. Uh, so what you can do is if you go to content and edit post settings, and I'll just choose one of these, for example, the properties one. Perhaps you have a real estate site. So where you want to go is the profile page design tab here. And you can see here the second option is the profile page tab order. And it goes from zero, that would be the first one, um, all the way down to 25. I've, I haven't seen a site with more than 10 or so, but it goes all the way to 25. Now, if you're not seeing it in the first order, the order is not correct, just make sure you don't have two with the same number uh, because it might be throttling or toggling between the two that have the same number saved. Um, but just in general, you can go from zero to the higher numbers and that is the order that they will display on the uh, member's profile page. So it just really depends on your site's goals, but that's another way to showcase better content. Um, you kind of help the, the member in that because you're presenting their best content there and you help the visitor because they're on your site for mainly for a certain type of content and uh, you're going give to give that to them first. One important note and I suppose a slight caveat with this setting currently is that because it's not currently in the membership plan settings, it's in the edit post settings, this applies universally. So regardless of what membership plan a member is in the tab order will be the same regardless of the membership plan. Those were the five that we thought were the famous, but there are some honorable mentions uh, you can say here, uh, some bonus settings that really do add a lot of value uh, to your members and, and what we feel can help separate your lower tiered plans from your higher tiered plans, uh, demonstrating more value. One thing that's just really important that I think is overlooked is the redirect page after login. Uh, so by default, when your members log in, they are taken to the member dashboard area. However, you are able to define a new page um, when members log in that they're redirected to. This could be a members only page. Maybe that's why they're really logging into your site is to you know, get that members only access to certain type of content. Or maybe you're creating a portal where um, they get links to, the, to multiple members only content pages. So you can create a portal page. Once they log in, they're taken to that page and then you, you present them with the six or so links that take them further into your site uh, for the members only content. But when you're editing a membership level, it is the second input option here. Um, and it's called redirect page after login. And again, by default, it's just the account homepage, which is perfectly fine. That's probably good for the majority of people. But if you have certain uh, special circumstances on your site or a certain type of audience or, or different type of members on your, on your site, you might wanna take advantage of this. Number two, I think this one actually everyone is familiar with. It's the search results priority. Uh, but just in case you're not familiar with this, under the search visibility tab, there is a wealth of uh, options here and settings to give certain members uh, more visibility on your site. And the first one here is the search results priority. So what this does is members of this membership level, zero is, is the most uh, priority, so it goes from zero to higher numbers, but members that have a better search results priority will always display ahead of other membership levels on your site. So um, this is 
especially helpful for members that are paying to be on your site or who are special on your site or, or, or a higher tiered uh, membership level on your site, you definitely want to give them more search results priority. And with that, they're essentially going to get more visibility on your site, more inquiries if they're professionals trying to connect with um, uh, you know, clients or customers, uh, they're going to get more inquiries. So there if definitely is more value uh, for being in a membership plan with a higher search results priority. And they're also, just to take this a step further, there is a setting for posts like jobs and coupons and events and articles that where this search results priority also applies. So they can get double, triple, quadruple benefit if they're posting content on your site as well. Let's just use the properties one as an example here. Under the search results design, because this, this is related to their position in the search results, if we scroll down and go to the additional settings, here's the option, respect membership plan search priority. So if you have a bunch of members publishing content for let's say events, uh, if this is set to yes, then if you're searching for events on the site and it's going to respect the search results priority, um, it's going to put these members, the members who have more priority, it's going to put their posts ahead of the lower tiered members. So this, I think, is, is the biggest value is the post because members can publish lots of posts as opposed to just having one profile on the site. So um, if you haven't utilized this or your site is, is content heavy and you're not utilizing this, you definitely may want to consider this. Okay, number three, and we talked about this actually uh, the reviews today, the ability for members to accept or delete uh, their own reviews. Now, depending on your business plan, you may not want to, to use this feature, but generally higher tiered members are paying to be on a site mainly for advertising. They, are, they get enough uh, guff from sites like Yelp and uh, you know Google where they really can't uh, moderate or control their reviews. So your site can work as an advertising tool for them. Uh, so with that said, if you provide them with the access and the privilege to accept and delete their own reviews, obviously they're going to keep their best reviews and, and remove the bad ones, but their profile page works as a beautiful testimonial for their business and a, and a wonderful advertisement for their uh, business and your lower tiered members, maybe they don't have that privilege and they're kind of stuck with the bad reviews. So just something to consider when you want to uh, give your members a little bit more control over their profile page and really turning it into a high value asset uh, for their business or organization. And actually going into reviews, if you do have the VIP add-ons club, we do have the reply to member reviews add-on that allows members to actually uh, reply to reviews that have been left for them on their profile page. So that's another feature that you could provide to your premium members and hold back from your lower tier members to try to entice them to upgrade to a premium plan. And let me show everyone where this one is since we're doing a lot of show and tell today, just quickly. This one is back in the membership plan settings. I'll head on over to edit one of these. And it's also under search visibility. If you scroll down, there is a section for member reviews. And it's this option here, ability to accept and delete reviews. And then this one is an add-on, but members can reply to reviews. This is also a big one. Giving your members to reply to either negative or positive reviews gives them a voice uh, to react to the person who left the review. And again, this can be a uh, feature that you only provide to your higher tiered uh, membership plans or levels. So you might want to consider the options here in the member review settings. All right, we're almost done with the bonus list here. Uh, number four on this list are the member search uh, permissions. Now this one is more so if if, if not all the, the members on your site, for example, general users and things like that are searchable on your site. If you scroll down more in the search visibility, we do see the member search permissions. Now everyone always sees these, like, are these members searchable on the website? Um, if they're absolutely not searchable, you can just set them to no and all they're doing is creating a record of, of themselves in your internal database. Uh, but if they are searchable in the public directory, you can take it further and you can select which other members these members can search for. So uh, right now I'm on a bronze plan and perhaps the only other person I can search for are silver plans. Uh, and I can't search for anyone else. I know LinkedIn uses this, uses this a lot. 
uh, something similar where premium LinkedIn plans, um, uh, you have to pay to get more access to different, to view different types of users. Um, so uh, you may or may not need this functionality, but it is here um, and the logic is here. Here, another example is employers searching for employees. Uh, perhaps employers can't search other employers, but they can only search employees and vice versa. Perhaps employees can't search other employees, but they can search employers. Um, so those are just a couple scenarios where this setting might come into play. And obviously, the more you can search, uh, the more you can see and find. And lastly is choosing whether to show banner ads on listings or not. So you might be using banner ads uh, around your site. You might be promoting internal pages on your site with the banner ads. They could just be Google AdSense. Uh, but something to offer your higher tiered plans is that they'll have an ad free profile page, whereas your lower tiered members, uh, you might display Google ads and things like that on their page, uh, which could really distract and take away from, from their profile. So let me show you where that is. That's gonna be under additional settings, and there are a wealth of settings here for the member profile page, the member's profile page. And over here we can see show banner ads on listings. If you set this to no, um, the banner ads that you create in your design settings will not display in their sidebar, their header, their footer, anywhere on their page. So they have a little bit more of a professional look and it's unobstructed uh, from any ads showing on their profile page. So your higher tier members, depending on your industry, uh, may appreciate that more elegant profile page. All right, let's take it to you guys now. We have, uh, we have our good friend, Franco. How you doing, Franco? Hi, Jason, I'm doing well. How are you guys? Excellent. Um, how'd you like the webinar today? Very informative as always. What I would like to know is about the email function that you spoke earlier about um, that allows you to moderate the reviews. Now, if you have your setting where your member is actually the guy that moderate the review, in the new email thing, will he get an email automatically when someone did a review on his business? Yes, so that's a great question, Franco. Um, if the member is the one that has the privilege and access to accept or delete their own reviews, um, upon receiving a new review, it, the review will be set to a pending status and the member is notified saying that there's a new review for them to, to review or moderate. And then once the member is logged into their dashboard area, uh, they can click on accept or delete the review when they have that um, privilege. Okay, so because in your example, it seemed like the owner of the site has to go and log in and, and approve or whatever the case might be. Yeah, so that's a great question. So one of the options is that the admin or owner of the site must approve all the reviews that are submitted through the site. When that is the case, and it is not the member accepting and approving the re or and de deleting the reviews, um, then the owner of the website is notified upon uh, a new review submission. And from there, you can log into the admin dashboard and then you can proceed with reviewing the review and then deciding if you want to delete it or accept it um, from, that, from that point. Okay. okay, that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, Franco. All right, good stuff. Thank you so much for an amazing webinar. Um, I saw more hands up. We're, we're Unfortunately, we're out of time. If we didn't get to your questions today, please, please ask them in the Facebook group uh, and we'll try to get to you there. Uh, thank you, David, for putting together this great presentation on uh, the top five overlooked membership plan settings. Always good to get a refresher course on those things. Lots and lots of BD Lab updates uh, on the way. I'll be sure to post some in the Facebook group and perhaps do a Facebook Live uh, in the coming week on some of the newer features that are coming out. And as always, again, if we didn't get to your questions or you have questions after the webinar, you can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and join us there. On behalf of myself and David and the entire Brilliant Directories family, thank you for joining us today. Have a great day and a brilliant week. Take care, guys.